What's going on guys? You're in for an awesome video today, as I recently watched not one, but two combat robotics competitions, and even got to meet Angus from Maker's Muse at the 2024 RoboWars Featherweight competition. Now, I'm too broke to build a massive robot like Death Throw, which I also saw there, but I did some research and found that there is an 150 gram class of robots called Antweights, which are great for me to get started with since they offer non-destructive and fully plastic subdivisions. So in this video, I'm going to be taking inspiration from all the fights I watched to build my very own combat robot based on, you guessed it, an ESP32 acting as a receiver and another ESP32 as the transmitter. Anyways, how are we going to build a whole combat robot with just 150 grams for everything or about the average human fecal weight? Well, most people start with using the lightest materials and components, but that unfortunately leads to a really similar list of parts from robot to robot, comprising of the Malenki Nano all-in-one ESC and receiver, cheap N20 motors, and some kind of screw switch to disconnect the battery. Now, while I think the screw switch is a great idea, the cheap N20s are way too weak for their size, and the Malenki Nano needs a really, really expensive radio transmitter while having pretty bad current handling capabilities for the motors and not being able to control every servo and brushless ESC due to the signal voltage. So I ain't using that because implementing a working proven solution is cringe. Instead, I'll reinvent the wheel for your entertainment, which is why I made this little board named the ANT-C3 with motor outputs which can handle more than double the current and controlling capabilities for all ESCs and servos with a 5 volt signal, not to mention the reverse polarity protection. This not only eliminates the need for one of those really fat radios, but also allows me to use up to four high powered N20 motors, which will come in handy later down the line. I also designed the transmitter with an ESP32 S2 display because ESP now will allow the two to communicate. I'm making the schematics for both of them open source on my GitHub, but if you'd like to know more about these boards, make sure to vote on my community tab which parts of the robot you'd like to see in more detail for my next videos. Since I designed the Ant C3 a couple months ago and there were no QFNs or BGAs, I decided to order a bear and have a go at hot plate soldering as you'll see later and PCBWay's quick order page made ordering the PCBs really simple and straightforward. Simply add your Gerber file and select your parameters. For me, this was a four layer board with extra copper for better thermal performance in a purple solder mask and hazel finish. The remote PCB was just a standard two layer in black and both designs arrived in less than a week, which was really impressive given all the extra parameter selections I'd made. Thanks so much to PCB Way for sponsoring this channel and providing me with these amazing PCBs. And if you sign up using the first link in the description, you can get $5 off your first order from them and help support the channel. Also, if you use KeyCAD to design your boards, not only can you export your manufacturing files straight to PCB Way's quick order page in one click, but you can also win a Raspberry Pi 5 and $100 by entering into the PCBWay KeyCAD Design Contest, which I'll link in the description below. Here's some of the soldering for these boards, and I've tried to cut it up so that it isn't as boring, but if you want, you can always skip to the next section of the video using the chapters I've added in. After doing a horrible job placing the non-refrigerated solder paste, I placed all 29 components, including a misaligned ESP32 C3 mini module, and slapped it on my MHP50 to reflow the board. Since this is 138 degrees solder paste, I just left it to heat up to 150 degrees and took it off when all the components were soldered. Next, I soldered the PS4 joysticks onto the remote, as well as the power switch and a couple other things. Okay, so as you can see, the soldering went very well due to some of my great skills. But aside from that, I haven't actually told you why I'm making a servo flipper type robot. Now, there's really only two ways you can go in this competition. 
flippers, spinners, or a combination of the two. And according to the Antweight World Series, flippers win more often than spinners in this weight class, with one of the main examples being Antiside, a pneumatic flipper which has won seven events so far. Of course, I have no idea how pneumatics work, so I just went with a servo to actuate the flipping instead, but it is really fast and high power, so hopefully we can see some success with it. In the interest of time, I ended up just modifying a 3D model that Elon Carrillo designed, with space for my PCB and N20 motors that don't suck, with the really high power micro servo being a drop in replacement thanks to having the same dimensions. Throughout the video, you might have also noticed these really nice purple tires, and after seeing a couple people use really thin or really hard tires, which I didn't think would give me enough traction, I took matters into my own hands by synthesizing the tires myself. Thanks so much to the team over at Sumo Boy for recommending us the Dragon Skin 10 NV silicone rubber, and make sure to go show them some love because they built some really amazing micro sumo robots. Here I am mixing part A, B, and a purple dye thoroughly so that I could draw it up into a syringe and add it to my mold. After about an hour or so, I came back and removed the tire and voila. One fresh Haas Industries tire, free from bubbles even without a vacuum. Comment down below if you want to know more about this process. Next, we assembled the robot starting with the chassis, adding in the ANSI 3 hardwired to all the motors, and then some covers and the wheel assemblies. I won't show you much of the programming because that's kind of boring, but I will leave it on the GitHub for you guys to check out. All you need to know is that I used the ESPNow protocol for bidirectional communication between the two ESP32s, giving me battery readings for both the remote and the robot, four speed settings, flipper control with this button, and a move forward at max speed button for those special moments. Let's finally get to the testing now. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you want a chance at winning the next version of my ANT-C3, which will include an IMU for more precise motion control, please like, subscribe, and comment down below. And when I hit 4,000 subscribers, I'll give a lucky one of you the new assembled ANT-C3 V2. Bye!